It's fabulous that you've all come out uh, and found your way across the south side of the uh, uh, Western Harbour Castle Hotel. Uh, I'm representing the staff side of the city, Councillor Fletcher, a very energetic supporter of uh, the Portlands and the Palmas of the Portlands, is uh, representing the city officially. I'd also like to uh, recognize our two partners, uh, Toronto Region Conservation Authority is tonight being represented by Brian Denny, who's back there. Thank you, Brian, for coming. And then uh, Waterfront Toronto is represented by their CEO, uh, John Campbell, who, uh, thank you, John, for coming, who in front of him and to his left has one of his board members, the former Deputy Mayor of the City of Toronto, Joe Panaloni. Welcome, Joe. I can finally say Joe now, after all those years of Deputy Mayor. Okay, so very quick overview. For those of you that were here or at the DX, you see I've copped your disease, David. Yes. We're at the DX uh, on uh, Saturday, saw all these slides. This is a compressed version of what you saw. For those people who didn't get a chance to come on Saturday, this will be a real quick flyby refresher for those who saw it and a new for you. Hopefully your fast studies because uh, to uh, make sure that we have the maximum time for consultation, I'm just going to fly through these if that's okay with all of you. So, the Portlands, a thousand acres. And from this picture, you can see that a lot of it is empty. So we have a phenomenal opportunity. And what this project is all about is how to maximize that opportunity and take into account all the challenges that are there, not the least of which is the uh, fact that the Don River doesn't know how to take a right turn in a storm. So what have we learned so far? Well, first of all, we've got an idea now from a lot of consultations and a lot of analysis of what kind of market demand, all things being equal, we could expect down there. And the short answer is the market demand isn't going to use all the space there for the next 20 years. Whoops. Uh, we have a better understanding of the cost related. All the work that was done up until last summer focused on the costs of flood protection and associated infrastructure. We didn't have any numbers about what the rest of the infrastructure for an infrastructure challenged area, how much that would cost. We have much better understanding of that now. We've also taken a look at the opportunities and uh, what could be done to work with the environmental assessment and within the guidelines set for that environmental assessment, what could be done with the different flood protection uh, alternatives that were looked at, including the preferred one that went forward to council and which we're now looking at again. And then finally, a big area needs a big vision and an understanding of the framework going forward. And we've done some thinking about that. And in fact, in this consultation, we're looking for some ideas from you in terms of how you see the vision for the Portlands and developing over the next 20 or plus years. A lot of what we've done is put some dollars. The green dollars are what are the opportunities for revenue? from the Portlands that are generated by the development that's possible in the Portlands. And we're trying to offset that against the costs, the red. And you'll see in a later slide that that red sign is much bigger than the green sign, at least for the next 20 years. So first, there's three topics for discussion. I'm going to give you a, a very brief outline of what the summary results are to date. And I want to mention and un underscore the word to date. Okay, we're only there. This cake is not baked with candles ready to present. Councillor Fletcher mentioned we're going to council starting on that in June. We don't have very long to finish this work. We still have a lot of work to go, which is why having consultation now is really great, because you get to influence the process as we do the work, rather than us presenting fancy glossy package all wrapped up with no opportunity to comment as the work is being done. It will get a little frustrating for you because you might want more results at this stage, but we look forward to your opinions as we're working through the different scenarios and the different factors and all the facts as we, as we have them so far. This is the flood protection that was recommended last summer that was uh, passed by the council uh, earlier and that uh, be because of all of the controversy, I'm not going to go into that, but the council in September unanimously, unanimously uh, assigned the responsibility to Waterfront Toronto, City of Toronto, and the Toronto Region Conservation Authority to take a second look at what opportunities there were 
to go from basically a plan that was in park and zero and whether we could get it moving a little bit and faster. So you're all, a lot of you are familiar with that. I won't go through the details. What we've done in the last uh, six months is take a look at three of the alternatives that were looked at in the original EA. The one you just saw was the preferred one, which is now on the bottom right of this one, and took a look at, can we tweak them to make them more financially feasible and, and more beneficial to getting things going? Because the original one that I just showed you costs over about $650 million without any other infrastructure like roads and pipes to get going. And a check had to be written to make that happen before anything else could happen. Nobody's writing big checks these days. So we have to take a look at alternatives to make it feasible to work through. These are the three alternatives that we've been studying. For those of you that know your EA alternative numbers in the report, the one on the left, your left, is alternative two, which is basically make the Keating Channel bigger and wider and it could absorb a regulation uh, storm event, which is basically the size of Hazel and what would happen Hurricane Hazel parked on top of the Dawn system instead of parking on top of the Humber system that it did in the early 50s. Alternative um, for, for W, which is the one on your upper right, makes the uh, flow channel smaller because there's a spillway going south, uh, straight down to the uh, ship channel. And then alternative 4WS, which goes both west and south, which is a realigned and reconfigured version of what you just saw a second ago, is the one that looks like, after all the analysis, is better on uh, the naturalization, on the uh, flood protection, and on city building, the three main criteria, uh, than the other two options. So that's the one that is being talked about a little bit more, and will be the one that comes up right now.